Всем здравствуйте, меня зовут Лена Now we are off to an official start. My name is Lena Zhivaglot. I'm going to moderate today's press conference dedicated to the campaign on People's Constitution, where we'll discuss the draft Constitution of New Belarus, uh, submitted by the public commission, and uh, which is supported by a broad uh, membership of the coalition of uh, People's Forces and the speakers and representatives from the Coordination Council, from the Tikhanovskaya office, from the National Anti-Crisis Movement and Honest People Movement, can uh, tell you what the whole idea of behind this People's Constitution is. I'm going to introduce today's speakers, Pavel Tushka, head of the National Anti-Crisis Management Administration and a member of the Coordination Council. Hello, Pavel. Olga Kovalkova, member of the Coordination Council and co-chair of the Belarusian Christian Democracy Party. Olga, hello. Andrei Korechik, member of the core membership of the Coordination Council. Andrei, hello everyone. Also, I will take the floor, Lena Zhevaglot, coordinator of the uh, community Honest People and uh, National Tech Crisis Management. And then Antolia Libetska, head of the Public Constitutional Commission and representative of Tikhanovska office. You're still muted. Next time you can uh, freely unmute yourself. Hello, everyone. Hello. Lev Margolin, member of the working group on drafting the constitution of the Public Constitutional Commission. Lev, hello, everyone. We have a small sound check here. Valeria Zhurakovsky, member of the working group on drafting the Constitution of the Public Constitution Commission. Hello. Hello. And finally, Valeri Kovalevsky, head of the cabinet of the Svetlana Tikhanovskaya office and representative Svetlana Tikhanovskaya on international affairs. Hello. Hello. So I suggest we can start right now. And the first speaker today will be Pavel Latushka. For media people, I suggest the following manner, modus operandi. Hopefully it will be convenient for you. The speakers will speak in the order that I introduce them, and then we'll have a Q&A session, not after each of the speech, but after all the speakers had their say. Ideally, uh, we'll take all the presentations take under five minutes for each speaker, and then representation of the draft constitution. We'll also have questions uh, asked in stream. We shall try to keep our eyes on those questions in the stream and we'll repeat them for the speakers. But uh, but media, of course, people have the priority of all the questions. Uh, we'll, you can print your questions in a chat box and the priorities are given to the questions formulated by media people. So, Pavel Tushko, you have the floor. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank all the participants of this conference and thank all the media people who have joined our stream. A very important question, the issue of adopting a people's constitution of Belarus. It's important to underline here that through this draft constitution, we demonstrate the unity of the coalition of democratic forces united behind the importance of adopting the people's constitution, the development of the main law of Belarus in the interests uh, of the people and by the people. And I would like to thank also the Public Constitution Commission, uh, headed by Anatol Libetko for the development of the draft people's constitution that is going to be launched and inaugurated for your attention today. And hopefully it will be the main draft document around which all the discussions will start. We would also like to underline the importance of openness and glasnost on uh, consideration of this draft document, when unlike um, the Russian regime, our people will have an opportunity to have their say and make their proposals on drafting, redrafting and amending this draft People's Constitution, I would like to underline that this is not a static document, it's not written in stone, and it is subject to change. Why? There is a need to support this draft People's Constitution. All of us want one thing, victory. It unites all of us, all democratic forces, an absolute majority of people living in Belarus. But can we have a victory by playing by other people's rules? For 27 years, we allowed Lukashenko to write these rules of the game. And each new 
edition of the constitution created for him personally, for his personal power, more priorities and preferences for him and uh, our rights and opportunities were shrinking as a result. Now Belarusian society is virtually deprived of any instruments of influence on the fate within the country and for the development of foreign policy of our country. Lukashenko, starting from 1994, have always emerged victorious in all the election campaigns by basically rigging and falsifying elections, referenda, and this allowed him to stay unpunished as well. But the elections of 2020 were lost by him, by a landslide at that, and the Belarusian society managed to prove that uh, visually by the street actions, by the collected uh, voting ballots, we have proven I would like to underline once again that Lukashenko is no longer the head of state and he has blatantly falsified the elections in Belarus, but he still managed to steal, maybe for a short uh, time, our victory from us. In that sense, as I see it, the constitutional campaign is the continuation of the electoral campaign of summer of 2020. It is the continuation of our fight for victory. Yes, it is true that Lukashenko now is uh, violating the constitution written for him. But now he also wants to write a constitution, uh, a new constitution, which in his eyes would legitimize everything, all those violations that are being committed at the moment. So he's going to draft a constitution which will allegedly allow him to have legitimacy to continue suppress people thinking differently, suppressing people's rights and liberties. Can we agree with that? Can we deny or stand aside from our fight? I'm sure that not. And uh, we must continue to be proactive and we must offer our own agenda for that. Some people might ask, ask a question whether the draft people's constitution is a, a changeover of the agenda or changeover of our uh, thinking. I would like to answer this right away. People's constitution does not change our agenda. People's constitution is not shifting the paradigm from the problems that we are viewing today because of the dictatorship. It does not replace all other instruments that are going to be put to use very powerful in future. That is political uh, pressure, economic pressure, and legal pressure, including also public pressure. And uh, we can even draw a conclusion here by saying that our participation in the draft People's Constitution project and maximum accumulation of our resources of people of our country is one of the powerful, one of the strongest instruments at the moment of public pressure on the regime. And we must, I believe, put this instrument to good use. All of us together, based on the draft People's Constitution, from the United Democratic Forces can be discussed and adopted. And for the first time, we can write and establish our own rules of the game, rules for our victory, rules by which we, our country, and our children will live on. If tomorrow will be the time of new elections, we would like to get, get rid of the dictatorship and Lukashenko. Now, why? Is there a question of the need to change the constitution? Because it is this constitution, unfortunately, which did not allow us to keep democratic standards and rights. It is this constitution that created preconditions for such dictatorial regime as uh, Lukashenko's rule to who can blatantly violate this constitution. Uh, that's why it is ever so relevant to draft a new constitution that would prevent any other person to do the same in future. That's why we're coming up with our own uh, draft of the constitution to prevent uh, the future dictatorship to write a constitution for its own needs. I, as a Belarusian citizen, what am I waiting from this new constitution? First of all, it should create legal guarantees and mechanisms to make sure that my rights as a citizen of Belarus are not violated. Secondly, we need a document that would ensure a real division of powers. Thirdly, we need conditions for economic growth of the Republic of Belarus. Fourthly, we need 
to have conditions in place under which we can develop good neighborly relations with all our neighbors and other countries of the world. And fifth, what I would like to underline here is the need to build parliamentary presidential republic to make sure there is no place for dictatorship in our country. As a citizen of Belarus, I would like to make sure that my rights, the rights of the citizen, and the rights of a human being serve as the paramount value for uh, and the citizen itself becomes the top value for the state of Belarus in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Pavel. Now I invite Olga Kovalkova, member of the Coordination Council and co-chair of the Belarusian Christian Democracy Party. Olga, you have the floor. Thank you very much for the organization for the participation. In fact, the introduction of changes into the constitution is an instrument of a dialogue with society. And this dialogue must be organized only through a referendum and through bringing to this referendum the requirements of the majority of Belarusians. Unfortunately, this is a one-sided process that we uh, observe now. It is largely an imitation. Uh, we see that uh, uh, without doing the referendum, the, uh, by postponing local elections, the government tries to do that. They are not prepared for this dialogue. They're afraid, but we must implement or must make sure that this process is open and such all the public processes must be organized like that and we need to unite here and do it as constructively as possible of course we need to discuss we need to introduce our proposals and changes into the constitution to write our own rules already we have many opinions and assessments of this draft uh, some people support it some uh, don't like it some want to return to the 1994 constitution the People's Constitution uh, project is open for everyone. It is not a closed circuit system. We indeed want to write the Constitution together and like how uh, the current uh, uh, regime's Constitution is written behind closed doors. And we want to develop such rules when it will be a win-win situation for Belarusian people. And Belarusian people support significant and not imitational changes in the Constitution that include the reduction uh, limitation of the number of terms of presidency, um, real division of powers and sovereignty of Belarus and such demands of Belarusian people must not be ignored because it can in invariably lead to worsening of the crisis, which uh, was the result of this uh, biases in the constitution and the deterioration of this uh, political crisis makes us more vulnerable to external and internal threats. And the People's Constitution campaign is the possibility to speak about how the Russian people see their constitution, about the need, what approaches can be used to do the elections, how to um, shape up uh, the membership of election commissions. It's important to involve as many people as possible for this work. Participation in this campaign can be organized in different forms and shapes as expert communities, as discussion fora. I believe it is very important to increase, and this campaign provides us with this opportunity to in, increase the level of political culture, level of the public debate and discussion and speak about human rights. And this campaign, which is equally important as a political process, is a, po a possibility to mobilize our society that our system is so much afraid of, and we must participate in it as a result. The public discussion of the draft of constitution and referenda are legal fully legitimate processes through which we must, must ex put as much pressure as possible. And for that, we need active participation of Belarusians in 2020. The Russians have demonstrated that they're not going to let themselves uh, to be deceived and they're going to use all the legal means at their uh, disposal to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Olga. And now I'd like to give the floor to Andrei Kurechik. Andrei is a member of the uh, core membership of Coordination Council. In 2020, we saw the unprecedented politicization of Belarusian society. Many people took part in the political campaign in this or that way. The uh, election support for Svetlana Tikhanovska or other election candidates or they, some people protest against Lukashenko, but not all of the village society is ready to come up with what we can call 
uh, values. For me, constitution is not the legal document alone, not only the basic norms. For me, it's also a value plat values platform for the society, which clearly shows that whether this society belongs to a number of civilized European countries or it is going its own unfathomable way. The understanding of what we believe in, what Belarusians believe in, what, what is most important for us, allows us to build a long-term strategy of the development for the country and for the society. If Belarusians, irrespective of the person they support, believe in the values of freedom, democracy, uh, people's power, justice, human rights, truly not in a de declarative form, then they will fight for this with any usurper and they will support the candidates that promote this agenda. It is the constitution that allows us to introduce into the society this discourse, the discourse of the real values that should be the foundation of the new Belarusian state, the renewed Belarusian state and the modern Belarusian society. Because the people that suffered from the 70 years of the Soviet regime and then the 27 more years of the Lukashenko regime on the awful propaganda poured on them from the television sets of the state media. Many of them have lost their way. In a way, they, they're tired of Lukashenko. But on the other hand, they don't know what the state they want to create, what system they need to opt for, what direction, what the, their place in the geopolitical space will be. We all discuss it with the help of the People's Constitution. Secondly, and it was mentioned by the previous speakers, the people need to come up with a protection against the dictatorship in this document. In other words, we as people need to come up with uh, this with such an option of suppression of power so that in no situation the uh, dictatorship would be possible. It's, it doesn't matter if it's a good or bad president, but a good or bad pro-Russian, pro-Belarusian party, which is in charge. Nobody can usurp um, power in Belarus anymore. That's the constitution we aim for. Of course, the document presented now for review is just the foundation or there are a lot of questions to this document and i believe together the Belarusian society can help the experts and the commission to get to the level and the quality level of the constitution that it will allow us to um, exclude any power usurpants if we formulate the the new qualities of the builders in society will be able to opt for the values uh, and for the interests of the country. In the sense, in this case, we'll have everything fine in the long term. Thank you very much, Andre. I would like to add uh, my name is Irina Zhivaglod. I uh, was one of the participation took part in the organizing this platform for the discussion of the new constitution. Why it may seem that is the best time to, for discussions, because we understand that now the regime is trying to control the agenda and fill the uh, information field with uh, information about the rests to demoralize the people, to show us that we cannot influence anything on this constant repression, information, fakes, the authorities are doing everything in order to conduct the future electoral campaign in historical conditions. Because the regime understands very well how it undervalued us in this last summer and it lost. So any electoral campaign for the regime today is an awful risk because it will do everything to create the opposite feeling so that we would feel that 
while by participating in political rather activities we are putting ourselves in, in risk and not the regime but the experience and the advantage is on our side we managed to uh, be, become victorious in the summer now Lukashenko is not recognized in any civilized country of the world I believe we can recreate the same this time therefore the people's constitution at the honest choice platform is is offered to everyone neither the current nor the new revision of the constitution from the regime will not sit well with us and regime understand it so we don't have our option if we will not have anything to use against it so we invite and all the Belarusians for the wider discussion of the new draft of the people's constitution that in a way must become the candidate for in the independent belarus for this we need to unite and uh, bring the project our common effort to the end today a lot of there's a lot of talks and critical remarks whether it's uh, similar to going back to 1994 constitution but here we need to understand one important thing that nothing can prevent us from getting what we want the victory the constitutional project that we the belarusian people want to see implemented in belarus so i think it's high time we unite our efforts join the discussion and uh, come up with amendments now i would like to give floor to mr libetka who's the head of the public constitutional commission the representative of Svetlana tihanovska on constitutional reform well, we're moving towards the new constitution draft and its discussion hello i will start with main points with the words of gratitude to the members of the working group of the people's coordination committed to the experts to local and foreign and to the thousands of Belarusians who have already joined the discussion of the new draft constitution the people's constitution we would like to state as a public constitutional commission that a lot of work has been done but it's not enough to feel that we are winning that we are one i want to tell you that we are uh, currently following the situation many people think that now it's, there are more important and pertinent issues we understand that there are people who believe that's enough to go back to the constitution of the 1994 and then the long awaited changes will come to belarus we uh, do not focus not on our uh, successes but we uh, say that we're ready to discuss today's issues like we don't have the constitutional majority of consensus so i echo the previous speakers who are trying to say that you should all join this effort at the same time i would like to uh, highlight the fact for the mass media that the, for the first time we came up with the effort to create a new constitution in the spring of 2019 it was the initiative of the belarusians representatives of the political parties organizations and expert community i'm highlighting this fact to let you know that that we're not saying this is a special operation of any foreign actors or belarusian authorities a few more words why the why the people's constitutional commission believes that there's a big demand for the constitution and for the new the people's constitution first there's a need it is a necessity because today the constitutional majority of belarusians feel themselves uncomfortable and bad in the format of today's constitution let us remind you about the facts the constitution of the 1994 was written basically and for the leader of the communist nomenclature Vyacheslav Kibic. the other 
drafts of the constitution were created for the interest of one and a single political person of the single political clan. What are the repercussions? We see that uh, they were privatized all the state agencies and structures, just like the parliament, the court became the departments of the one system headed by one ruler. So well, our main, major task now is to prepare the constitution aimed at the interest of 9.5 millions of Belarusians and millions of our compatriots who have to live outside our country today. This is our major priority. We're also saying that this is a very relevant, and this is relevant not only from the point of view of the prospects, but also from today. My colleagues already said that um, Belarusian authorities are preparing some amendments to the current constitution. Will it be enough to say that it's bad? I'm sure there are lots of people who will, who will say that we know that this is bad, but what is the alternative that you are offering? Here, there should be not 10 or 15 different viewpoints, but one single consolidated position of all the proponents of the change. That's where we're aiming at. It is very important today. We're also saying that in current conditions, it is very timely and very topical. You know, the people are sometimes saying that uh, you need to prepare beforehand, because if you don't do that, you will may be late. The new constitutional draft is not something that is written in one day or in one week. Time is an important resource. So we're saying that we want the, this constitutional draft to be written by the citizens of Belarus and not a group of people. Uh, at the end, I would like to note that for us, one of the priorities is not, is not to simply change the people who are in power on the last names, but to change the system that these people have been created and working on for the last 27 years. If we don't do that, the new people, the new names will come into the old system and there'll be no motivation to radically change anything. But we need radical changes. We need constitutional overhaul and not just uh, to paint walls of this system. So we invite all the citizens to join this effort. We need to change the system. If we don't, we will neither go back to the 1994 constitution nor adopt the new constitution for Belarus. Please join us and we'll do it together. Thank you, Anatoly. Now I'll give floor to Lev Margolin. Lev, please. Hello, dear friends. Anatoly Benbetska spoke about the creation of the public commission. I'll continue on this topic. The events of summer and autumn of 2020 accelerated its work. The commission was supported by Svetlana Tikhanovsky's team. A working group was created, which included prominent lawyers, as well as representatives of political parties and civil society. At different stages, the chairman of the Supreme Soviet, Mechislo Grib, the judge of the Constitutional Court, now retired, Valery Fadiev, retired judge and ex-president of the Union of Lawyers, Gary Paganyayla, lawyers Aliana Iskova, Ivan Plachimovich, Mikhail Plisko, public activist Valery Zhukovsky, Viktor Kardienka and others took part in the development and discussion of the draft. More than 25 people in all during the COVID-19 pandemic. Sorry for that interruption. During the COVID-19 pandemic, when all work was conducted in the Zoom conference mode, more than 50 meetings of the working group were held from December to June. By the beginning of March 2021, the draft of the new constitution was prepared for wide public discussion 
and was submitted for an expert review. The draft was based on the best European practices stated in the documents of the Venice Commission, officially it's called the European Commission for Democracy through Law. It's an, it's an advisory body in constitutional law established at the Council of Europe in 1990. They studied a number of constitutions of European countries. Although originally the constitution of 1994 was taken as a basis, practically all sections had to be elaborated from scratch. After preparation of each chapter, it was presented online at the YouTube channel. The Belarusian public showed great interest in the draft and a great number of comments and suggestions were received both from Belarus and from abroad. Many of them were taken into account in the course of further work. Major assistance was provided by the international experts, particularly by the International IDEA and other organizations. The 20 international experts from different countries of Europe and the world, including the former chairman and the sec secretary of the Venice Commission, uh, Thomas Mar Marker, former president of the Constitutional Court of Lithuania, Danius Jalimas, corresponding member of the Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, Yuri Barabash, coordinator of the Center of Constitutional Constitutionality and Human Rights of the European Humanities University, Lyudmila Ulyashna, expert from Austria and Italy, Poland, and other countries participated in the discussion. The experts treat our achievements with great care always emphasizing that with all the tremendous experience we have gained in the process of developing the post-Soviet constitutions over the last 30 years, the main task is to achieve an in internal consensus. As a result, the draft received a highly high appraisal from the experts. In the course of further work, all commitments are discussed in detail by members of the work group and in why one way or another are taken into account in the further work on the draft. There's also plenty of criticism. Most of the comments are on point, but some were due to lack of careful reading of the text. It would be desirable to have fewer of these phases, such as you're doing everything wrong or who authorized you for that and more remarks on, on the point. We also recorded an interesting phenomenon. Many people approach the draft of the new constitution from today's perspective. They are constantly worried about what other articles they should write in order to guarantee that there will be no attempts to change the constitution, no attempts to usurp the power. Now and then such a mood was also felt among the members of the working group. This was expressed in a desire to make the constitutional provision as detailed as possible so that the future parliament would not be able to get rid of them. But it must be borne in mind that if the people elect a parliament whose task will be to reverse the events, it will not be difficult for them to change the constitution as well. In general, there's only one effective weapon against attacks on democracy, the desire of the people to defend this democracy and I'm sure that the Belarusian people have already matured for this. The more so since the right to resist the attempts to resist the power, to seize the power is directly enshrined in the new constitution. The project is still a work in progress. At the moment, the revised version of the draft is posted on the site constitutse.online. Suggestions keep coming in. We have recorded almost 700 comments in our four months. We hope that after the new team joins its efforts, this flow will increase considerably and will make the draft constitution of new Belarus a true people's project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was uh, Lev Margolin, member of the working group on constitutional draft amendments. I would like to give floor to Valery Zhukovsky, who is also a member of this organization. Valeria, the floor is yours. Hello. 
I will launch the presentation. Oh, I'm going to show my presentation. The current Belarusian constitution determines Belarus as a democratic, social, uh, law-abiding state. Unfortunately, I must say that Belarus has ceased to be a law-abiding state. There is nothing left from democracy and the social orientation of the state is uh, put to question ever so often and frequently. That is why the draft constitution of new Belarus gives the notion of democratic, social, legal or law-abiding state a new content and a new definition and new mechanisms of protection from possible uh, misuse to make sure that the rights and liberties of people are no longer simply empty words and declarations in a new draft constitution. Uh, they are formulated as the norms of direct action for all uh, public authorities and public uh, servants. Any person without any uh, preliminary uh, consent or permission has the right to organize uh, gatherings and meetings. The unemployed are guaranteed unemployment benefits at a certain level. So this is the direct norm of direct action. You might know that the unemployment benefit now is ranging from 20 to 58 rubles, which simply denigrating for self-esteem of any person and the rights and liberties provisions also have the some a lot of limitations and there's an additional mechanism of protection of rights and liberties of human being any person could be could have enough a right to directly go to the constitutional court if his or her rights or liberties are somehow infringed on and we don't have this now in our belarus also for the purposes of protection of rights and liberties we will have the uh, institution of a human rights ombudsman we have a principal change in a new draft of constitutional system of power our draft constitution sees as the center of political decision making a single chamber parliament where different groups of the society would be able to protect their interests, whereas the president in this system would remain as the head of state by performing mostly representative functions. But of course, this individual won't be able to be elected for more than two terms in his life. We were often asked why on 20 uh, and peace. Where did you come from? And here you can see the numbers of and um, peace of different countries depending on the population. The green point is 110 and um, peace of the parliament that we have at the moment. The parliament, as you can see, is underrepresented, underrepresented vis a vis other countries. So the red dot here, located on the trend, is our suggestion in our. Uh, draft constitution to have 220 MPs in future in our parliament. Another thing to understand, the draft constitution suggests the change of the election system into a mixed system. So in other words, half of the parliament, 110 MPs will be elected just like they're today based on majority system in their constituencies. And the additional 110 MPs will be elected by party tickets, which will return real politics into the country. In our side, we had uh, more questions around the role of a new president in our country. And the biggest fears are about uh, the fears of uh, that new president not usurping the power once again. To appease the skeptics, I can enumerate some of the factors that we're going to put into the draft constitution for giving to give legal force to presidential edicts, they must be signed, first of all, by the prime minister of the country. A president 
will no longer have the right of uh, lawmaking initiative and no decrees which have the power of a law. The lawmaking initiative will belong to now MPs, the government, and no less than 25,000 citizens put together in a group. Now the president will have the right to sign the law, return the law with his remarks to the parliament on, uh, for resubmission. But this is more like a delaying power, which can be overrun by the parliament by a simple majority. The president will no longer have the right to initiate a referendum. The president will simply have to appoint a date for the referendum, which can be initiated either by the parliament or upon the uh, proposal for, from no less than 450,000 citizens. Now the president is no longer going to appoint ministers, heads of uh, local governments, judges. The president will no longer be able to announce the state of emergency in the country. Yes, uh, this person will be the commander in chief. And in case of a military threat, the president will be able to announce the uh, martial law that will have to be approved by the parliament in two days period. But in case of public disorder or um, environmental emergencies, the um, state of emergency is announced by the prime minister, again, for the subsequent approval by the parliament. As for the formation of the government, the candidacy of the prime minister after consultations with different parliamentary fraction, factions are going to be submitted by the president and the parliament can either approve the presidential candidates, candidate or disapprove it. And then the parliament can come up with their own uh, nomination and appoint their own prime minister. Subsequently, the prime minister appoints other ministers. A similar procedure is applied in constitutions of, say, Estonia, Poland, Slovenia, Germany, Finland. In other words, it is a success story already well tested in many European countries where the parliamentary republics and the government will bear a collective responsibility before the parliament this way. The draft constitution provides real independency, independence to the executive power by excluding the influence from uh, to the judicial power with, by excluding any influence from either the president, the parliament or the prime minister. The judges are to be appointed by the newly established uh, justice council whose members are elected by judges, lawyers, scholars, and law teachers, as well as representatives of uh, human rights organizations. Judges are going to be appointed indefinitely because the short-term contracts are the main instrument of influence on judicial decisions. Often we hear counter proposals that you can see what kind of uh, judges we have in the country. We now have a lot of problems in having fair justice. Seeing this problematic situation in the transition provisions, we foresee that for the first time, the National Justice Council judges will be will represent only one quarter of this Justice Council. And additionally, it will be represented by international experts. And this new, new membership of the National Justice Council will have to undertake the procedure of confirmation of uh, the judge's competence, professionalism, ethics, and integrity. Another problem seen by the society is that fair justice is impossible without implementation of the right for legal protection or legal defense. Now we can see how lawyers are deprived of their 
lawyer's license for just doing their job right in order to avoid such collisions in the future. The draft constitution has a separate chapter about bar association where lawyers will be guaranteed a real self-governance system through independent association of lawyers and also the decision on uh, allowing or permitting lawyers to do their business will be done by the independent bar association now let's speak about the constitutional court now the constitutional court consists of 12 judges we suggest that we can increase its membership to 15 because this way uh, because we foresee a broader job description for the new constitutional court because now people will be able to go to the constitutional court with a constitutional complaint and the constitutional court will also consider contentious issues between about uh, power collisions between uh, local governments uh, inspections and supervising bodies and then in terms of the establishment of the constitutional court or shaping up its management, the judges of the constitutional court are going to be elected by the parliament upon the uh, suggestions from the president and chair of the Supreme Court and the number of candidates must be at least two times more than the available vacancies for the seats of constitutional judges. The draft constitution also suggests making a reality out of the local governance system. The heads of local governments are no longer going to be appointed by the president as nowadays, but instead they will be accountable to citizens through their representative functions. For implementation of the functions of local governments, we will need, they will need sufficient resources at their disposal and the government will not have the right to interfere in their competences of local governments another thing to say the draft constitution now has new supervising bodies which were neither in our previously in our country nor under our current constitution at first it will be committee to supervise over the activities of uh, the investigative and security forces that would be like law enforcement supervision body committee on ethics of the civil service and uh, anti-corruption committee this committee will be spearheading the fight against uh, misuse of powers for personal gains more detailed information about the text of the draft constitution can be read on the site constitutes uh, dot online there you can submit your proposals and critique that will for sure be taken under advisement by the working group and will make subsequent decisions about them thank you very much thank you that was valeria jorakovsky member of the working group on developing the draft constitution of the public constitution commission now invite valeria kavalevsky head of the Cabinet of Representatives of Svetlana Tsikhanovska, Representative of Svetlana Tsikhanovska on international affairs. Valeria, you have the floor. Thank you, Elena. I would like to thank all the participants of the press conference for important information about this initiative. I would like to thank uh, the Honest People Community Coordination Council, the National Anti-Crisis Management Administration for your active participation and uh, contribution to the development of uh, the draft constitution. A special words of thanks go to Anatoly Libetsko, uh, head of the Public Constitutional Commission and member of uh, Tsikhanovska Constitutional Reform Office. Now, together, we are bringing up the new draft. The actual draft uh, drafting started last September when Belarus found itself in an acute crisis situation, which continues to be aggravated and uh, creates more harm for our country. The crisis was triggered by the falsified elections and the violence against peaceful demonstrants. But among the root causes, because of which Belarus found itself in the crisis, are two. First, the lack 
in the existing constitution of balance of powers between the branches of power and lack of actions of the mechanisms of supervision and control over implementation. As a result, the regime suppressed everything and now constitution is not working at all. Neither uh, rights nor liberties are observed. But the phrase, now it's not a time of law, has become a rule of thumb for the regime. Until we change this, our country will continue to deteriorate. That's why we have to reformat our political system. We need to rewrite the DNA of the state and the mechanisms of participation of the society in its management. And we must put the state of the country from head to toe when the laws and political decisions are made based on the national interests and not the caprices, fears, and greed of one single person. For that, we need a new constitution, which would redistribute powers, restore the system of checks and balances, and will reinstitute uh, the system of supervision over the decisions of state bodies. It will prevent uh, the repeated usur usurping of power. Next, we will create opportunities for uh, accountable and competent work of state apparatus. Such characteristics must be part of the new country of Belarus. Now, every Belarusian has a practical opportunity to read the future new law, understand its importance, and make a contribution into the improvement of this draft constitution. The pre procedure of this discussion must be transparent and understandable to make sure that the next constitution would be owned by every single Belarusian. It's very important to have constructive engagement. In 27 years, it has become a norm when the state model of Lukashenko is not transparent. It does not allow people to participate either in the discussion problems nor making decisions on how to resolve them. In order to build new, safe, and prosperous Belarus, participation of the society in state management must become our daily norm. I will stop on this. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. That was Valery Kowalewski, uh, head of uh, Svetlana Tikhanovska representative office, and that was the final speaker for our presentation part. Now we can say that officially we see a launch of the campaign People's Constitution to discuss the draft People's Constitution for New Belarus suggested by the Public Constitution Commission. Our speakers were speaking at length about this, uh, I will offer a brief summary of what we have discussed here. I'm going to show it on the screen now. The first stage, as it has been presented, that we have the draft constitution of New Belarus, which uh, would reflect the will of the Russians. Next, uh, we, you can send your uh, feedback to the Constitutional Commission uh, before August 1st, 2021. Then we'll organize open discussion and voting for the new provisions of new constitution of Belarus until August 27th. And we invite all Belarusians to participate. The uh, schedule of these discussions will be posted on our side. We'll finalize the uh, final draft of the constitution. And then if the Constitutional Commission and the uh, Chamber of Representatives do not bring our constitution to referendum, then we'll shape up the initiative group and we'll start a national referendum on the people's constitution upon the initiative of uh, citizens of Belarus. So these are the logical steps of the campaign, quite self-evident steps. This way, we would say that we Belarusians are prepared to create and adopt such a constitution and such rules uh, when all of us will be on the winning side and not the imposters who call themselves people in power. And now, we, now we can stop sharing this slide. And now I invite our media people to ask questions by raising the virtual hand. This way I can see it right away. Also, we have some questions uh, in the stream, in the live stream. While you're raising your virtual hands, I can read some of the questions from the stream. Now, the question which has been mentioned a number of times in the comments of our broadcast. The question following. Uh, we can use the Polish way and adopt first uh, the so-called small constitution, which would describe the principal things. I think 
it would be logical to address this question to Anatoly Libetko. It is a comment from stream, so I cannot know for sure who is asking this. Anatoly? Anatoly. In other words, we did analyze the experience of Poland, among other countries, in terms of constitutional reform, and we did try to adapt it to our conditions, and thus this document became available when we were discussing the model of the political system. So the political experience of Poland, the positive one, was considered by us while we were preparing the new constitutional draft of Belarus. We are ready to amend it further. Thank you, Anatoly. Lev is asking, Levkin Margolin's question to you. Last time when Lukashenko was changing the constitution, it eliminated the terms uh, for his election. What are you suggesting for the parliament and for new president? It's a very important question. I'd say the optimal approach would be to have presidential elections conducted together with the approval of the constitution and adoption of the constitution it will allow us to tackle two tasks first is the legitimate switch to the new constitution and second the new president needs to wake up to a new constitution because many people don't understand why we cannot go back to the constitution of 1994. apart from it being the constitution that became uh, they gave birth to what we have now. We need to understand that the president that uh, is elected under the constitution of 1994 would not want to limit his or her powers. This could be a problem because it's difficult to find a person. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe uh, the elected president will be a great person and they will hold the constitutional reform, but we must rely not on the people, but on the institutions. So if the new president works with the new constitution, it will be the best approach. As to the parliamentary elections, they can be held three months after the election. Although our constitutional draft states that the presidential elections are conducted in the autumn and the parliamentary elections are held in the spring. There's another meaning to that. Let's say under a certain euphoria, the people vote for the populist power, be it the president or the parliament. Next week, next year, this euphoria may subside and the different branch of the power will be voted for more conscientiously. Thank you, Lev. Next question to Anatoly Libetka. Why do we need to have the parliamentary presidential republic? As a relatively small European country, we should be a parliamentary republic. I don't understand why we need the presidential part. Thank you for this question. We totally agree with this point of view. Uh, our working group also is against as having the presidential slash parliamentary governance model. It is for this reason that we are rejecting return to the 1994 constitution. So here we have similar approach to the model of political governments. Why we're avoiding it to become the, the purely parliamentary governance model. You know, just like me, what we have now with our multi-party system. Over the last 27 years, the Democratic parties were basically 
underground. They were not developing. They were fighting with the current authorities. Today, we need some period of time for the political democratic parties to become more strong so the people would trust in them more. For us, the president is uh, solely an instrument of balance of power, checks and balances. It's something that we want the presidential the institute to be. They are not formulating the rules, and he or she is not managing the budget, the resources, which was enshrined in the 1994 constitution and available now. So once again, for us, it's the checks and balances mechanism. Let's imagine we have elections only of into the parliament and the parliament formulates the laws and manages the budget. And let's say a political structure with a big support, may financial support of maybe foreign powers comes to the elections and they get the, ma the majority of the parliament. And this is a threat to the sovereignty of this country. Could be, is that is a threat to freedoms and rights of the people. Also a possibility, there must be an institution that balances that and the presidential position might as well do that. That was our opinion. That was our understanding when we were coming up with that. Poland and Lithuania have similar approaches, I guess. And uh, therefore, we are looking at them as well. Thank you. Anatoly, next question from the Deutsche Welle journalist. How exactly simple Belarusian will be able to take part in development of norms of the new constitution? I will be able to answer this question. We have a list of platforms for discussion, including the open discussions available through the written form. The key one is the platform of the um, uh, commission. All the social feeds are listed there where you can discuss it. After the press conference, we will publish the whole list so that you know that where you leave the country or join a discussion is the place where we'll be collecting your information and proposals from for further processing. The next question is aimed at Pavel Tushka. Address the Pavel. Why we're dealing with constitution now if we have not won yet? So once again, why we're dealing with the constitutional issues if we have not won yet? First, we believe the constitution is a tool that leads us to the one of them that uh, will lead us to the to the victory among from other tools uh, like the uh, public, economic, and other influencing factors. Secondly, we don't want to be just witnessing the regime changing its own constitution or amending it and amend it to suit its own needs. I believe here. Uh, we mustn't le let it happen. Example here is the elections of the 9th of August last year when Belarusians did not boycott the elections. They came to the polls, polling stations, and they showed who they want to be a real winner. This way we are creating additional opportunities to promote our agenda we must also hinder the agenda that the regime will be trying to implement. Thank you very much, Pavel. Pavel Pavlovich. Next question. Based on the experience of Ukraine, based on the Ukrainian experience, they could come up a necessity to block uh, some TV stations and internet resources working in the interest of the third parties that are working in, in Belarus and outside the country. Although Georgia did not do that, 
and allows for broadcasting of any media outlets. This is the context. Now the question, don't you think that the, uh, this ban of this kind is a two-way sword? Will there be enough time and patience to tell, to help people understand what is bad and what is good? Lev Margulian is ready to answer this question. You know, the experience shows that the you cannot solve a single problem by banning something or someone and by if well, you introduce some limitations or ban some internet resources, you will this way uh, promote people's interest to them. The problems that we have and they appear in the information fields can be fought only in that very field. You need to explain to people, to show them the consequences of this or that decision or simply not to close down the internet resources that you don't like. Thank you, Lev. Next question to Olga Kovalikova. Objectively, it's very difficult to understand how the people can adopt the new constitution if uh, the people did not read the old one. I don't understand how to deal with that. There are tons of pages and I'm not an expert. Thank you for this question. It's a very good one because I believe that Belarus on the whole and all of us have not been taking much of an interest in the previous constitution. The only thing we knew is that the constitution is not adhered to, is not, a, but our task now is to explain to people through you, our platforms about the important parts of this constitution so that people would understand that they're focused on the major issues here. Also, we need your support here to, to uh, help you promote the information that we will be promoting and spreading through various, various social feeds and so on. If more people get involved in that, there's a bigger chance that this campaign is effective and we will achieve our success, not only in promoting this, but also in understanding that constitution is an underlying document because over the last 27 years, Lukashenko has been telling us that this is not important. Thank you, Olga. Next question. Are you in contact with the Constitutional Commission with the authorities? Were there any attempts to cooperate? I think it's the question addressed to everyone. Anatoly Beska could be one of the people. It's not that I'm uh, eager to do that, but we have a history of relationship between with uh, Mr. Miklashevich, who is in charge now of the official constitutional commission. Before that, he was the head of the working group that for a number of years was preparing the amendments and changes to the constitution. We have met two times. Last time we met was after the four months of efforts of having such dialogue, it was before the presidential campaign. Before that, we managed to establish contacts with the current head of the constitutional court of Lithuania. So, as I said, we met several times. Unfortunately, we received just a minimum of information. It allows me to say now that friends, in the, you, can, you only have the draft of the new constitution available online and uh, available for the public. None of other projects or drafts are available for your information. And I'm saying in, in, on the behalf of the Constitutional Commission, we are ready for public debate in order to discuss what we are preparing and what the authorities are preparing. We believe this is an open message to the people who are 
in the Constitutional Commission. We're ready for the public debate. We're ready to discuss our proposals and that of the majority of people and what uh, they are trying to propose. Thank you, Anatoly. We totally agree with you on that. Then could be a, a difficult question to Olga Kavalkova. If the constitution is not put in referendum, and if you are not successful in implement in launching your referendum, what will be your plan? What happens if Lukashenko adopts his constitution at the referendum? That's a great question. If the constitution is not put in the referendum, I mean, our constitution, we're saying that there's a threat of that, but this campaign gives us possibilities that we want to use, depending on how we'll be able to put official public pressure on the authorities. We'll it will depend on in the involvement of Belarusians. Saying I'm talking about our plans after this happens or doesn't happen is difficult, but we really want to use this campaign. In 2016, when uh, mothers 328 turned to me and said, we have a problem with the criminal code and with sentences, can we do anything? Many of them did not believe that we could succeed. I think that the belief here is the locomotive. Just like Elena said today, when the thought is are trying to take this belief away from us, the belief that we can change the situation. We need to get back this belief through the campaigns that we're conducting. It's important that the voice of Belarusians, Belarusians sounds louder. I want to note once again that this campaign allows legally to participate in the discussion there are some threats, but let's use all the opportunities at hand and involve the more people we can. We need support of journalists for that as well. I would like also to add to what Olga said, the new constitution will not solve the problems of Lukashenko. I mean, the constitution he's developing now. In order to solve the problem that Belarus is facing, new decisions are needed, the dialogue is needed, we need to uh, work jointly to solve the existing crisis, based on the example of the old Belarusian meeting, we saw that Lukashenko was trying to use it as a panacea, but it failed. Nobody at that meeting discussed the real problems that were very much pertinent and relevant. Lukashenko may adopt a number of constitutions. Any such initiatives will not lead to any results. Just like a decree on the transfer of powers to the Security Council uh, was, law, was adopted, it didn't solve any problems. The country is going sliding down into the crisis. Our draft of the people, people's constitution is the response that will allow us to solve the crisis and give the possibility to the country to develop a new. I would like to add that the plan is a very flexible document, changing depending on the factors. Of course, we'll be trying to understand where it's going. We'll be following the agenda. Thank you, Valeria and Olga. Next question to Valeria Jurakovsky. Why the, the judges are not elected and appointed by the people? Valeria, we have looked into this possibility and we thought of introducing the notion of the The lowest level of judges, the so called uh, magistrates. But later, we'll discuss this issue with experts in the framework of the working group meetings. We came to the conclusion uh, that 
the election of an appointment of judges by the people does not solve any problems. In this case, the judges, instead of being unbiased, not getting involved in the political process, they will try and use their powers for an election campaign. The Venice Commission recommends the similar approach so that the, the independent a judicial council would take care of the judges, where the judges make half of the list at the same time, there'll be the legal community will affect the, ju the judges. I will add a couple of words now. I will say that in fact, if judges are elected by people, it doesn't solve a single problem here. First of all, how people would know how qualified a person is who is a suggesting himself or nominating himself for a position of a judge. Next, how a choice is going to be made when there are two or three candidates based on the principle of who looks better, who is more photogenic or younger. And the thirdly, indeed, a person always is res held responsible before the person who elects him. And with judges, this is a totally not obvious thing. Whereas uh, local authorities must be held responsible before those people who elect them. And judges, first of all, must be accountable before the law. Thank you, Valeri. Thank you, Lev, for your answers. And now the question goes to Pavel Latushka. The question, is this uh, project, meaning the People's Constitutional Project, related to the Victory Plan? The victory plan, I guess, uh, what was suggested earlier in Belarus. We're just saying that this is one of the methods of achieving a victory. Because any activity of a civil society of Belarusians can lead us to a result which is hotly awaited by the majority of Belarusians in our country. A passive position can never lead to a victory and the participation in the process of discussion and uh, adoption of a people's constitution, the goal that we set for ourselves to make sure that our draft constitution is taken on board and suggested at the constitutional referendum, which is planned by the regime, is one of the instruments of victory for us. If this document is totally disregarded and neglected, by the regime, it will create for us additional condition for other steps. I wouldn't want to use this uh, place and time to speak about that, but it also provides additional arguments before other propaganda media people who say that uh, opposition wants to achieve change only through economic sanctions and the pressure. We suggest a real absolutely natural, democratic, open uh, instrument, which is participation of Belarusians in the adoption of people's constitutional. The draft constitution, which will, according to our opinion, reflect the real interests of a citizen, a person, and our country in general. So this is our suggestion, one of the instruments of victory, but this is not the only one. I underline not the only one. That's why it uh, fits right in the other projects as well. Thank you for your answer. And the question goes to Valery Kovalevsky. Valery, what is the advantage of new constitution of uh, uh, rolling back to the old constitution of 1994 or adopting small slash working or temp provisional constitution? Because the problem is not in laws and constitution, but their enforcement. Valery Kovalevsky. Yes, thank you for your question. Indeed observance of laws and the constitution itself is the biggest problem or deficiency that we have in Belarus. So that's why we are saying that it's not enough to change a person, it's important to change the whole system. If we speak about the possibility of rolling back to the documents adopted in the past, then we also understand or rather need to take under advisement that based on those documents, we saw the development of um, our agreements and treaties, which are the form the fiber for all our 
state and the society. If we roll back to those documents, we will have to roll back all other legal acts and bylaws adopted along with that. So I think it might be a senseless process because instead of repairing this building, which is uh, totally dilapidated and uh, it's almost uh, like a condemned building, it's better to tear it down and build a new one. Thank you, Valeri. I have the following question. Last time when Lukashenko changed the constitution, he started his presidential term anew. What can you suggest? Uh, how soon should be the elections into the parliament and the presidential elections after the adoption of the new constitution? Lev Margolin, maybe. Partially, I have answered this question already because first of all, in our constitution, in our draft, we say clearly that the president has no right to be in power for more than two terms in the course of his or her life. And in the transition chapter, it says that it relates to the terms already used by the person. So 10 years and not, no more. As for the when the elections will be appointed, it's more likely that we will have to start off with the political circumstances. Of course, the optimal version would be to adopt a new constitution at the referendum, just like it was done in 1992 in Lithuania. It has some of the positive features to it in case if the constitution is broadly known by the society and re receives uh, broad approval from the society and political leads, we can, and if we, we could organize presidential election right after that, it would be an ideal solution. As for the elections into the parliament, according to the draft new constitution, this parliamentary elections should have been organized six months after presidential elections, but now, we don't know, maybe it should be done as soon as possible, then maybe within two, two and a half months after the presidential elections, we could have also renewed the parliament. Thank you. And the question for Valery Zhorkovsky, can you tell us more about the new president's powers under the new constitution? Maybe you spoke about this already, maybe you can repeat it again. See. The president is the head of state. So accordingly, this person represents the country in for, foreign affairs and relations with other countries. This person signs international treaties and agreements. This person accepts credentials and appoints diplomats. But as we have already presented together with the government, it is done along with the government. It is the government that submits the nominations and the president approves them. The president is, among other things, also a commander in chief. And as the commander in chief, this person appoints the military command, but it is also done together with the government. Also, the president, like any other head of state, has the right to uh, grant presidential pardon. The president can give awards and uh, give promotions and new ranks. The draft constitution now also has a uh, security council as a coordinating body on the national security affairs and the president, according to the law, is shaping up this body and is heading it. But the Security Council, according to our draft constitution, includes also the Prime Minister and the Chair of the Supreme Council by title. So this is a coordinating body. In other words, the President is doing all the classical functions of a head of state, which exists in many countries of the world in terms of appointment of officials. As I said, this person 
uh, introduces the nomination of prime minister to the parliament for the first time. Also, the president submits to the parliament the nomination of uh, the head of the national bank and the nomination of the prosecutor general. Thank you, Valeri. I guess those people who have questions can ask them. Now we'll go through the comments in the live broadcast. I will read some of those questions. We have many questions about where the public discussion is going to be organized, where we can submit our feedback and critique on the site narodne.com. You can find it uh, in the broadcast and YouTube. And uh, we are going to collect additional platforms for the discussion. And we're going to tell you about the dates of open discussions. Your comments can be submitted to any of those platforms. The leading platform for the discussion will be the site of the Public uh, Constitutional Commission. There you can leave your comments, feedback, and critiques, which will be processed by the membership of the Public Constitutional Commission. And then two, three options could be like, uh, can be uh, returned for resubmission, uh, this feedbacks or taken on board. For you to understand that this is a totally pro transparent and understandable process so that reaches our experts, expert constitutional commission and coalition of democratic forces. It will be posted right after our broadcast in public where you can read in detail the whole algorithm of dates and platforms. So briefly, that's it. This is the site where all the information is collected. There were a few questions on how the feedback from people is going, uh, is going to be processed. I also try to answer it now. If there are no further questions from journalists, we could say that our campaign on the discussion of draft constitution for new belarus the campaign called people's constitution starts now and we invite all the belarusians to participate in this discussion we thank all the speakers who have joined to this discussion and first uh, debate about the people's constitution maybe some people also have something to say as a farewell remark maybe if not then long live belarus you can uh, unmute yourself and say something. Long live, long live Belarus, long live. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We invite everybody for the active engagement. I would like to wish everybody a nice day and the rest of the week. All the best to you. Join us in this endeavor. Thank you. We'll stay together.